What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 30 of Convos on the Pedicab. I'm here with a very special guest, um, podcaster, uh, aspiring actor, and controversial internet personality, Kevin McKay. Um, before we get started, we got to give a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by 10th Planet Austin, 10PATX on Twitter and Instagram. Get woke and improve your jujitsu at the same time. Woke. There is a lot of civil unrest going around right now. You know, we got a defunded police force. There's no better time than now to learn how to intelligently defend yourself. You know, we have phenomenal jujitsu classes taught by Kyle Bain, number uh, five practitioner in the world. We got an MMA program taught by uh, Andrew Craig, former UFC fighter, uh, also by BJJ Black Belt and pro fighter Cody Hofstadter. We got strength and conditioning taught by Isik, the Viking Ninja. So we have a lot of um, a lot of classes. We got a great great training environment. You get to progress at your own pace. Everybody is ex is extremely tolerant and accepting, accepting and open minded. So. Um, yeah, I'm sold already, Alex. Hell yeah. Thank you, Kevin. So yeah, uh, we're up between 35 and 71. So uh, if you're in that area, please uh, check us out. 10th Planet um, Austin. Uh, you can find them 10PATX on both Instagram and Twitter. Anyway, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, for doing this. I really I, I really appreciate you coming on considering um, the the beef you've had the, with... Uh, the Twitter heat. The Twitter beef. Yeah, we, we've been cool, though. We never really had any Twitter no, beef. No, yeah, we haven't we've had a ton of interaction. No. But I'm a little confused, though. I, I thought this was Drag Queen Story Hour. Am I in the wrong place? Yeah, but that's, uh, that's next week. That's next week. Okay, cool. At your local public library that you're paying taxes for. Perfect. I'll come yeah. back for that. Yeah, yeah. But it's good um, to be here, man. I um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've watched. I've uh, done a deep dive. I watch a lot of your shows, and it's uh, good to finally be talking to the man, the myth, the legend, Alex. I mean, this is yeah. amazing. I, I feel the same way. I'm happy. I mean, there's. Uh, I feel like both of us could have potentially gotten a little bit of heat from our like group of supporters for doing this. Could have gotten heat. I've I've gotten heat. Have you gotten heat? Well, not not really heat. It was just like, why are you going on the on the pedicab show? And, th and there are you know judgments that I'm sure you get because of the guests you have on, but. It, to have a, a jerk like me on the show shows that you're open to you know hearing different perspectives, and I think that's important. Of course, you got to talk. You got to talk to everybody. And the purpose of this podcast is to be uniting and not divisive, right? Like I, I want everybody who comes to talk to me to like present their best self. And I, this is a podcast so that we can realize that we have a lot more commonalities and differences. And it's also a way to make people who otherwise wouldn't approach actually approach to have like a more positive interaction with. Like that's the purpose of why I'm doing that. So I'm. That being said, Kevin, I'm like. I'm so glad that you came on. I am so glad to be here too. But and I love what you just said. But I I have to uh, I have to to uh, take issue with you slightly um, over uh, having Harrison Smith on your show last week, and uh, and you know I don't want to I don't want to uh, start off on the wrong foot with you here. No, go go say but, what you feel. Address address your concerns, Kevin. Awesome. That's what we're here for. Harrison Smith, by the way, I, I don't know if, if you got a creepy vibe from him, but that guy seriously creeps me out. Does he not look like David Crush to you? Are you too young for David Crush? I'm a little too young for David Crush, but I liked Harrison. I had a phenomenal uh, interaction with him. Go you should Google David Crush, Branch Davidians, I, well, I saw the I saw the Waco movie, but okay. I, no, I liked I, – I thought Harrison was actually, like, cool as fuck to talk to. Like, he was super open-minded. Whenever I had a question or a concern, he answered the question. Like, he was super respectful. We had, like, some other conversations about a bunch of stuff afterwards about, like, his upbringing and how he grew up. Like, I thought Harry I, – and I, I'm going to post some of those clips, like, on Twitter and on YouTube a little bit later. But, like, I don't think that these – I think that the InfoWars people get a bad – they get a bad rap, man. Harrison said on the show last week, Alex, and I quote, race is not a factor at all when it comes to – police brutality and my response to that is this Harrison easy for you to say for a white guy there are stats upon stats upon stats that show that blacks have a higher chance of being pulled over by police officers being arrested by police officers and potentially dying in yeah, place in well, police custody yeah but Kevin, so for Kevin, him Kevin, no hold on right. but for him for him to say for him to say that that the, that race is not a factor in that is is complete is blatantly false and it really shows that he is, has a, no understanding of what's going on in this country with, with race relations. And for you to not call him out on that, Alex, I thought was just crazy to me. I don't know. We, we were talking for over an hour, and I did call him and Alex out on a whole bunch of other things, too. And we, we had a whole discussion about Bernie Sanders and a whole, about, a whole, about a whole bunch of other stuff. And I do think that, like, look, man, yeah, there are some racial concerns with um, – 
with policing, but there's also a big economic issue that we need to address too, because I think that generally speaking, when you know a group of people is has 70 percent of the generational wealth as another group of people and stock market participation is like half the level as another group of people and there's been like a history of redlining and all this other shit that's happened um throughout these communities you generally speaking are just going to get like shittier police interactions in you know poor neighborhoods so like i think ultimately there's got to be a consensus of how do you um how do you get people out of poverty you know what i mean like how do you how do you like how do you like start teaching financial literacy in areas and in neighborhoods that otherwise people aren't thinking about that stuff? So like I've, I've brought up, I've, when I ran for city council, man, like I brought up a whole multitude of issues in regard to that. And when I ran for city council too, man, I was, I had a whole, um, I don't know if you even looked at my council website, but I had a whole platform for police reform. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was the fact that I think that all the cops should have personal liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also said that, um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu training needs to be mandatory and you should have at least a blue belt and up in jiu-jitsu before you even are allowed to be a police officer. And you should also be have the same EMT basic certifications that a firefighter or a paramedic has in order to do this job. And I think that when you start making these common sense police reforms, a lot of the stuff that we are dealing with right now is going to start dissipating. And all that stuff has nothing to do with Harrison's comments last week. Yeah, but we've also and I think and I think I think that for him, for him to come on that show and for him to say something like that that you know is false, Alex. You can't say that that every person every right. every race is treated the same Kev, way. Kevin, Kevin, officers. Kevin, Kevin. I also you know this. listen. Um, I also had another guest. I don't know if you saw my last episode, but we had a whole discussion about the whole George Floyd thing. And I also had a big disagreement about George Floyd. And I told my last guest, dude, George Floyd was murdered. That was murder. That's clear as day. And we had a whole, ar and we were like, there was like an argument after the show about how I'm giving people on the left too much leeway and too much, um, too much slack. So I'm getting this from both angles, dude. Just, just understand that I'm getting this from both angles. But anyway. Yeah. I mean, um, I just, I just, I just thought that, that, I mean, it's one thing to say it. It's one thing for him, for him to say it to you and have you not react to it. And and I, I don't know if it, it was a long episode. I don't know if the comment went over your head, but I think if Kevin, if, maybe it went over. Maybe maybe it went over my head. I'll rewatch the episode. We're all trying to learn and grow from these episodes, but I'll look into it. And I'm glad that you brought this up to me. Okay. All right. Awesome. But um, how did you get involved with Jimmy's uh, campaign? So um, I know Mackenzie Kelly pretty well from our time at uh, our neighborhood bar up north, the Riata Bar and Grill. Shout out to the Riata Bar and Grill. Uh, 425 specials every night. Uh, but I've known Mackenzie for a while now, and um, you know, I, I, I really don't have anything against her uh, personally, but just from getting to know her, um, she's, she's not, I realized early on that she's not someone I would have taken seriously as, as a public official. Getting a beer with her is one thing. Her being in a position of power is, is a whole other thing. Um, and you know, heading into the general, like I, I was, I, I think a lot of people under, underestimated Mackenzie. We can all we can all agree on that. I mean, I don't know if anyone uh, actually thought that she would a go to a runoff and b actually win the election. No, I actually I, she sure was, I, I actually was predicting. I was calling it in September oh, and good. August. I was like, dude, Mackenzie's taking this home. Mackenzie's there coming. Go. Mackenzie's gonna get the W. Like you look at the demographics of the district, and you also got to look at how pissed off people have been with the city council on um, these past couple of years. With like, well, it start it started with the camping stuff, right? Um. But there was bubbling concerns, man. There was code next. A lot of people were pissed off about the soccer stadium. Um, nobody likes this whole influx and barrage of scooters that's, you know, littering our streets. Right. And we have this, like, urbanist pro-developer city council that's, like, enabled all of this shit. You know, the soccer stadium. Cesar? Yeah, Cesar, um, Adler, um, Flanagan, you know, the, the, the Dahlia, um, Pio, like, the, these, like... You know, Adler's like minions, right? Like, so you have you have a lot of that, and there was like a lot of bubbling like frustrations about this. Um, and then you know these COVID lockdowns happen, mm -hmm. and the COVID lockdowns for a lot of people, including myself, were a tipping point. Um, people used to ask me like, "Hey, dude, do you want to get on board with this?" Like, because I ran against Adler. Did you know that? For mayor two years uh, ago, I did see a clip of that. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm sorry. I ran. Mike, I did see a clip of that. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, so I ran against Adler, and I talked a lot of shit about like the city when I was running, and but it was like mostly like a comedic kind of campaign, and I just felt like I was being pushed out as a pedicab driver because of like these big California tech companies were coming in and invading my space and not letting me participate in the economy anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I, I had valid concerns, right? Um, and then after the election, like things kind of got a little better when they cleared out the rainy street and and only allowed like pedicabs and 
you know, electric vehicles to come on and do, to, to operate on rainy. Uh-huh. And I was really happy and appreciative. And while this was happening, all this camping stuff started happening too. And people were like, hey, do you want to get on board and sign this recall stuff? And I'm like, no, I have no reason to. Like, this doesn't bother me that much. They, the city was helping me make a living for a minute, right? But then lockdowns happen. And then once these lockdowns happen and once they're telling me, like, I can't work, I can't make a living, um, then it's like, oh, shit, I feel threatened by, like, everything that these people are doing. And what do you think prompted these lockdowns? I think people are worried about a virus and they're worried about public health. But if you're going to lock somebody down and you're going to do that, there's got to be a plan to justifiably compensate people before you do that. And they had no plan. And it was terrifying. And I just felt like that when they did these lockdowns, the city didn't give a shit about me. And then, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on a rant too. No, it's um, I'm on a rant and I'm expressing my concerns. And I think this is what this should be about. Um, and then we had these protests, right? And we, everybody agrees that we got to protest police brutality. Everyone agrees that. Everyone agrees that we need a better, more accountable police force. We, we all are on in unison with that. And I took that so seriously that I ran like a whole city council campaign to talk about these issues specifically. Mm-hmm. Okay? I, I, I get it, man. But then it's like when, when the same people are telling you, hey, you better stay home and not go out or talk to anybody. But then, in the same, but then those same people are telling you to go out and protest in large groups standing next to each other. And then they're blaming bars once everything starts closing. Yeah, like a lot of people are going to get pissed off. And I think that when every, everything that happened all at once within this past year, it just reached a tipping point. Do you, do you, think, do you think people should be pissed off at themselves for uh, not wearing a mask out in public and then increasing uh, COVID numbers and COVID deaths in Texas, prompting to further lockdowns? I think, I think that... Because um, you made it pretty clear you're not, you're not a big fan of wearing masks, right? I think there's a time and place for mask wearing. I had a discussion, too. Me, me and my other friend were arguing about mask wearing, too, because he's like, dude, you're pro-mask. You're pro mask. And so I've, I've had people call me a communist and say that I was pro-mask because I think that there might be a time and a place when well, it's Well, that doesn't okay make to, any sense. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly, man. Like, I've had... I, I honestly, and I've been very consistent about my message about this. I think that when it comes to mask wearing, there's a time and a place where it's probably smarter to wear a mask. Like if you're around food or if you're at a grocery store. If I go into a bar, I'll probably put my mask on like when I'm next to my waiter because I don't know what my waiter or my server is going through. Right? Well, and then, when I have well, – hold on, man. When I have a guest, if you wanted me to wear a mask, Kevin, I would have worn a mask out of respect for you. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Um, and I've said that repeatedly. Like I've worn masks with guests who've wanted me to wear masks. I'm fine with, with respecting the wishes and the concerns of other people. All right? That being said – I don't think it, it's not. I don't believe that it's necessary to wear a mask when you're outdoors. I don't believe that it's necessary to wear a mask when you're exercising. Um, I don't believe that it's um, necessary to wear a mask when you're in an environment of other people who are willing to like voluntarily assume the risks of doing this. Well, that's my that's that's my take on it, man. Right. I think that there's got to be choice, and people should have agency, and we need to educate people. And our city has done a horrible job about communicating the public risks of this virus. Well, I think if, if people in this sud- in the city, state, and country uh, did what they were supposed to do, which is what we were told early on, is to wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask around other people, and don't go to super spreading events. Like pro- I think, I think, I think, <laughs> like- we're, dude, 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 spring break in Florida? Are you kidding me? There's thousands of dumb kids on a beach getting drunk yeah, and getting and laid, 15- and none of them are wearing masks. Yeah. It, if people wore masks, we're the only country, we're the dumbest country in the world. We're the only country that hasn't kicked this thing. And the reason is we have an incompetent president <laughs> that called the that called it COVID a hoax. He did. He said it was a hoax. Did he? he no, he said and the response. Yeah, and then he's dummy. fine. And then he's fine. I, but like, uh, he said that, that our response to the virus was a hoax, Kevin. But also, uh, like, my mistake. Okay. Um, when 15 to 25 million people stand next to each other and are yelling and chanting and also coughing on each other because they're getting pepper sprayed through no fault of their own and tear gassed, that is also a super spreader event. And, if, and people can't understand that that could have been a super spreader event, too. That's I'm not, not saying that, I'm not say, any any event could be a super spreader event if you're not wearing a mask and you're even if you are I mean, wearing people were taking their masks off to smoke cigarettes and do all types of shit at these protests too and there were like fights and and all and shit taking place during all that stuff so like there was the, these protests that were occurring were super spreader events and then when the media is is like blatantly ignoring the fact that this could have possibly spread the virus it's literally fostering our media's response to this was also fostering a lot of COVID denialism too man. And then Adler's I think it would taking. Depend on your media source. If you're if you're watching Infowars, no, your I, I, don't, I don't. It's not my main source. I mean, I watch. I, I listen to it here and there, but I also listen to The Hill, and I listen to ABC, and I listen to CNN, and I watch Joe Rogan. I try to get a. I, I try to get a uh, varied source, a varied and well balanced source of news. Do you think more people wearing masks at a at a BLM protest or at a Trump rally? 
There are probably more people wearing B- uh, masks at a BLM protest. Well, but I'm just saying that the BLM protest probably were totally a super spreader. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but the BLM protests were still a suit. You know, it's it, to not even consider that that was a super spreader event is like. Um, cognitive dissonance to the max, you know? Well, I don't think anyone that, I mean, listen, I'm And not, just for I'm, the record, just for the record, like, fucking, I hate racism, and I'm not, like, defending or supporting right. any of that shit. I just, I'm just trying to be objective and honest about this. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a moderate independent, so I have no problem, no problem ripping people on, on both sides. But, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the timing of BLM, uh, I, I can understand the timing because of George Floyd and all that, but, um, but I understand the need to get out there and, and have your voice heard, but... Yeah, and in the middle of a pandemic, it doesn't matter if what your political affiliation is. If you're getting together in a big crowd, uh, shit's going to spread. But I'm just going to say, it, the, if you look at the difference between a BLM protest and a Trump rally, at a Trump rally where no one's wearing a freaking mask, and they go out of their way not to wear a mask because we have an idiot president to tell them they don't need to, okay. that's a big, that's a big Kevin, difference in Kevin, do you, do you know what the death rate for uh, COVID is right now? I do not. It's like a 1% death rate. According to like the CDC, we have like about a 1% um, death rate for this virus. And also according to the CDC, 94% of people who either died or had serious complications from this virus had severe pre-existing health conditions. So with this information being widely known to the public from the CDC, why weren't we shifting a message to actually improve your lifestyle so that you're less likely to get complications from this virus. Well, I mean, what, once, the vi- once the virus came to our shore in, in, in March, Alex, there's, there's no way that someone that's, that's overweight is going to lo- lose, a, lose a shitload of weight right uh, away. Are Just, you kidding I mean, me? Within like three, we've had this for nine months. Within nine months, people could lit- legitimately reshape and change their entire life. There's healthy people in, in every nation. But this should be mo- a motivating people. factor to we're get the, healthier. Kevin. We're the only people that didn't take this virus seriously, Alex. I know you don't want to accept this. I, no, it's I'm, a fact. I'm, we're the dumbest country okay, in the world We also this, have We virus. also have like a 6.5 percent unemployment rate in the middle of a raging pandemic and that that statistic in and of itself is remarkable and in other countries kevin you want to talk about you want to talk about another another reason why i like this has actually caused me to love and appreciate living in america more than ever before in other countries people were getting like violently arrested beaten fined tens of thousands of dollars for like not social distancing or not wearing masks or being within like a kilometer with being within past a kilometer of their property and they had like these dro- they, they had drones following them. They had mass surveillance. Like you literally had other other countries living in what appeared to be a police state. Right. And yeah, okay. Well, they kicked the virus, but is that the price you want to pay for like kicking a virus? I would rather get COVID than live in that type of environment. Cool. You should tell that to the two hundred fifty thousand people. I will. That, uh, that I will. Died. And I'll tell to their yeah, family. Tell, I, I, I will. I will. But I'm just okay. Off then. I, I will. You I might as well. I'm not gonna say that, but I'm just telling you that's that's how I feel. Like I would rather. I would rather take my chances, and maybe I'm saying this from a place of privilege because I'm, I'm young, I'm healthy, I take really good care of myself. I get my, my vegetables from JBG Gardens, which is a phenomenal place um, on sev- like on 71 by the airport. It's all organic, pesticide-free, homegrown vegetables. Oh, good plug. Um, which maybe they could sponsor me and give me some free shit afterwards. Actually, I don't even want it because they, they deserve as much help and as much financial support you as know, possible. I think, but what, right. what I'm, I think these people that have, that have lost someone to COVID, you know, they're going through a tough time losing their loved one to a virus that we couldn't contain, but they rest easy at night knowing that you're enjoying your civil civil liberties. Yeah, I, I hope so. That's but the I mean, most ridiculous thing I, no, I think No, it's I've not. No, it's not, though. But like this, this is like how I feel, and I'm glad. And listen, Kevin, I'm glad that you're um, coming here and listening to me talk about how I feel, and we're both sharing Absolutely. ideas with each other, so I, I appreciate this. Um, Let's talk about the campaign. We, we, we all right, really well, I, th- about I, think we, I think we got our message across over COVID, but ultimately, I just don't want to live... I don't want to live in a society where everything is going to be like ultra digitized. I don't want to live in an area where like a bunch of small businesses get um, wrecked and decimated by large cor- by large multinational corporations. I feel like we need our expression. We need we need expression. We need free thought. We need we need agency. We need to be able to like um, be able, uh, stand up for our, ourselves as as workers. And I think that when you have like a multi a big small business culture, it actually like helps facilitate worker it's, rights and people like yeah. having but it's a right. horrible time for small business and yeah. it's just it's just been a shitty year man it's there's a shitty not, year. There's, it's not a a, year. there's not a person in this country that hasn't been affected by by covid and and the economy uh, after that so it's just been yeah it's, it's been hard it's, yeah. it's been a, it's been a, it's been a year to remember to forget in my book it's been a year it's been well a year. or not because i think that you should learn you should take what you learn from this experience and grow and be a better person from it there's obviously a lot of lessons learned and i think i'm sure. i'm doing my best to try to do that I'm really doing my best to try, do. to try and be like – I'm honestly doing my absolute best to try to use this crisis and become a better human being from it and help other people become better human beings from it because the response on everybody's end to this, for the most part, has been horrifying. Like the amount of anger and division and, and like the fighting that we're, we're going through and dealing with, like it's, 
not good. Well, the anger in division always, has always been there. Um, I'm not sure how, how much of a, an effect COVID had on that, but um, I think it's gotten a lot worse. I've had I've, yeah, I've like lost be. friends because I was adamantly against like the lockdowns. Really, I got rid of my Facebook dude because of um, I was like I just felt like the, the only thing like the only thing that posting on Facebook was doing was causing me to like lose friends that I cared about. So I like it, it's a ru- it's a rough year if you're a very political person. Like it sounds like we both are. It's a rough year to be. Because uh, people are just exhausted, uh, exhausted from COVID, exhausted from, uh, uh, I don't want to hear this, exhausted from Trump. Uh, this has just been an exhausting year uh, politically, and po- politics has affected people more this year, I think, than than any other because of the virus. But, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to, if we want to talk more about the, the, the campaign and as far let's as, talk, let's talk about yeah, as, as far as why I got involved. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I know Mackenzie pretty well, and um, you know, I, I known that she had run for, ran for city council, uh, I think it was 2014 and, uh, I, and I saw some more articles about Gamergate and all that. I don't really know what that's, what that's all about. Any of that stuff. Yeah. Neither, neither did I, but, um, that where, where Mackenzie kind of fell out of grace with me is when she started tweeting her tweets about the homeless really bother me. And let me give you, give you an example. She was, um, she was in a drive through at Taco Cabana. And she, she took a picture of a homeless guy passed out in the drive through of Taco Cabana. And his face was clearly visible. And Mackenzie has 20,000 plus followers. And I thought to myself, did Mackenzie ever think to herself, I wonder if this guy going through the worst time of his life wants me to put his face um, in a picture and send it out to my 20,000 followers. It, it immediately told me that Mackenzie... Um, just really doesn't have any empathy at all. Maybe, and and for for her to do something like that, just just so uh, without even thinking about it. Sure. Really, sure. it really worked me the wrong way. And okay. also, she she tweeted about homeless people getting haircuts underneath 183, right. and it was just like someone's doing a kindness to someone, and Mackenzie's worried about they have whether or not they have a license to get. Yeah. Haircuts. Okay. I, I, it I, really bothered right. me. I get it. Just just to just to push back and just to push back. Yeah. Um, Jimmy and Jacob are doing the same shit to Mackenzie. Like, Jacob Aronowitz is going on Twitter calling Mackenzie an actual Nazi. And I'm like, listen, I'm a Jew, dude. I've had family that were killed right. by Nazis, okay? And Jacob's a Jew, too. So I'm like, dude, you're better than this. You're, um, so like, you're, calling, um, you're calling somebody an actual Nazi. When you go around and you call somebody that, like, that's like calling somebody a pedophile. Or that, that's almost in the same level as calling somebody, I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but like in, in, this, in today's political climate right now, that's like calling somebody the n-word almost. Like it's it's horrible. Like you you that that's those are like fighting words to start yeah. to start doing that. And then like when it came to like Harrison Smith with the video that w- that um he made for Mackenzie, it's like what Jimmy Flanagan was like stalk like the fact that they found that information that it was Harrison Smith. What are you like stalking at his house? Like that's like that could be interpreted as a tacit threat to um no ha- well I mean, that they that's it, they got it from the campaign finance form. But it that's, said H it said it. H Smith. So how are they like knowing that it was Har- like how do they know that it was Harrison Smith? Anybody, like it could well, be. I'm sure it didn't take too too long to, to I'm, figure out. I'm just out, saying, like that. I, could... I'll agree with you about Jacob, though. He didn't do uh, Councilman Flanagan a lot of favors during this campaign, and he might have been good <laughs> about the ground game, getting the ground game out for for Councilman Flanagan. But he he had loose lips, and <laughs> no and, shit. And he, you know, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really defend anything that Jacob had to say. In fact, when he when he did that fo- that Facebook post, um, it was ca- what uh, called a socialist manifesto, or whatever. I was pretty freaking upset about it because I because I was spending this is you know about a week or so into the runoff and I'm spending time trying to find information to um, basically educate voters about what's going on with basically tell voters who the real Mackenzie Kelly is because I didn't think they really they really do and that post by Jacob was really counterproductive and Jimmy Flanagan was obviously not going to win this race being a socialist right that's that what was, I'm that wasn't that, going to that, help that, that's another thing that made no fucking sense yeah. to me um, Jimmy Flanagan is the most neoliberal corporatist politician in Arrow City probably next to Adler like he got more real estate and development money from any candidate that was running in this entire election so this is disappointing and I'll share I'll share this with you I I I I, I sent him a text message (laughs) and I was like listen man I don't know what what point you're trying to get across by by sending this stuff out but I don't think he knew how much of a shitstorm it was on Twitter because I don't I think he's more active on Facebook but I was like listen man like you pretty much gave uh Mackenzie's uh supporters a, a marketing tool to uh let people think that Jimmy Flanagan is a socialist. So I was like, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get in a conversation about political uh, philosophies here, but I just asked him, can you just not tweet 
anything or not send out anything like this until after after the election. They can do whatever the hell you want. Nah, I don't care. Well, I, I kind of. I, here's my other concern with this too. It's like Jimmy's like the most corporatist. He's one of the most corporatist politicians in Austin. We both agree on that, right? So to, to even hire someone like Jacob Baranowitz, it's like under you're undermining what like real leftism is about, dude. Like you're undermining you're undermining like real progressive. It's almost it's almost like you're trying to like use Jacob and co-opt um, progressivism just to get voters. Like it was the most pandering, like no, it was the most nauseatingly pandering thing to do. Well, for me, for him to have even hire Jacob, like if it was like a guy like Fred McGee who helped write the People's Plan for like Land Code or something like that, and he hired like a guy who was like an actual socialist or a communist, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well, it's on brand and it makes more sense because the the, the ideology and the actions behind the the ideology are consistent. But the fact that it's Jimmy Flanagan hiring Jacob, I'm like. You got to ask questions, and those are justifiable questions. I, I would, I would, you know what I mean? Like, I would agree, but uh, you know, just because you have someone on your camp on your campaign staff uh, doesn't mean you have to agree with 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 all of their with all of their politics outside of the policies going on. How could you it, agree it, with any it, of this? Any of what he's doing, though, that's what I mean. Well, like, here's the thing. I mean, uh, Jimmy didn't have you know, you call him a neoliberal or whatever. I, I, I you know, I would consider myself a moderate. I was a moderate, moderate uh, supporting Jimmy Flanagan. I'm, there I'm were also moderate. there were also a lot of. Uh, uh, self-identifying socialists. I don't agree with those people. I think social socialism in America is a very bad idea. But we all rallied together because we thought it was very important to support Jimmy and make sure someone like Mackenzie Kelly didn't get elected. So it, it, you don't you have see, to agree I, with. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. And, and I thought it was really important that we start getting dissenting voices on our city council because it just seems as though everybody was like was literally thinking the same way and it was becoming a situation was like who could out left the other person and then it was also the way they were doing it it just felt like it was like how far left can we go without actually helping people and that's what i that's what i was feeling well you certainly have a new voice on, on the, the city council there's uh it, there's going to be a unique voice i know and uh, i'm glad and i no you, you want you want to know something else you want to know another fun fact i didn't endorse jennifer Vernon. okay i didn't i didn't want Vernon to win i'm glad alter won Interesting. All right. I, I, ta I, the only, re the, another big reason why I like Mackenzie, and just to say something uh, really good about Mackenzie, is that she listened to me. When I call Mackenzie, Mackenzie calls me back. Mackenzie mm -hmm. voluntarily came to my pedicab and talked to me, and I had an episode with her where I was asking her a lot of tough questions and talking to her about a whole bunch of stuff. Okay? Um, Mackenzie took my concerns, listened to what I had to say. She was receptive. She talked to me. Okay, like her campaign staff, they talk to me. They are nice to me. They listen to me. They call me back when I have a concern or a question. Like they've treated There's... me and been extremely nice to me. Whereas Jimmy, I asked Jacob if um, Jimmy wants to come on the pedicab and talk to me. Mm -hmm. No, dude, not a good time. You know, d can't do it. We're too busy. It was like Jimmy like snubbed my invitation to go do this. And then when it came to Verdon, I asked Verdon to come talk to me. I didn't even get a response. Uh -huh. Nothing. I asked her treasurer. I asked everybody. I've messaged her. Ver Verdon, that. She blocked me on on Twitter for like a minute for no reason. Oh, but you know who talked to me? She didn't. Allison, um, Allison didn't want to come on because of like health reasons and just because she was worried. And I, right. I respect that. She talked to me for thirty minutes on the phone about like, um, some of what some of my concerns were. Yeah, that's cool. And her husband was nice yeah. to me. Like they talked to me, and, they, and her husband gets a lot of shit from like a lot of people that I'm friends with. But I'm like, her husband and Allison have both been very nice to me, and they've talked to me. And whenever I've had a question, they've done their best to at least answer and communicate. So I support right. people that I feel listen to me. And, that, and that's and that's important. And I've I've had conversations with Mackenzie at the bar, and, and she she's da she's down to have these conversations. Exactly, it's the, good. Yeah. The the, the, the problem the problem with Mackenzie is is this. I mean, my okay. Let me backtrack. Oh, one of the main one of the main problems with the Flanagan campaign is that they refuse to make adjustments. And I felt that they could have been uh, gone on the offensive a lot more with Mackenzie before the general, and. After the general, when they realized, I mean, I was I was shocked that Mackenzie took it to a runoff, and she was only within two to three to four percentage points uh, going into uh, or after the general. I was like, what's going on here? So I kind of did a deep dive on what's going on with the Flanagan campaign because I feel like something's not really going on here. And it, just from doing a deep dive, I, I realized that you know they 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 were, they were trying to play it safe. They were afraid to go on the offensive against Mackenzie because she's a woman. And I'm like, yes, she's a woman, but there are are legitimate issues to 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 be raised about her qualifications and her character for city council. And you have to go after those things. And, and particularly if your strategy in the general isn't working, you got to make those adjustments in the runoff. And that's one of my biggest criticisms because I, I, I said, a. uh, I sent a message to the campaign manager, Flanagan's campaign manager. I saw, I saw you post on Twitter. And I, and I, I gave it a lot of thought. I, I, I laid out some things you could do and like, she didn't even get back to me. 
And and that kind of bug that kind of bugged me because I had already invested quite a bit of time in the campaign, and I'm like, they had an inability to listen and make adjustments. And if your 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 ideas aren't working, you have to listen to new exchange ideas. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out. So I there's a lot of reasons why they lost the campaign. Well, there's a lot of hubris too. I think uh, Flanagan just you know. There was like an era of like elitism, and there was like they thought that they were, they had this in the bag no matter what. You know? I would agree with was... that. I would totally agree with that. And listen, I I, I was on a call with with Beto. Uh, the... <laughs> All right, no, go go go. You're on a call, Beto. Continue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. You, that's fine. All right. You caught me. I got with your chuckle. No, no. All right, all right. So I was on a call with I was on a call with Beto the night before the election, and uh, it was it was a phone banking thing, and they got Beto, Beto involved in the last minute, and I was just thinking like why why. I I I share with them like get a blue chip dem to do something for Jimmy, do a video or whatever it is. So they pulled in Beto the night before. And I'm just like, this is not the best use best use of time for Beto. Like he could be in Austin campaigning, he could be doing a video for his 1.8 Twitter followers. And and so he did a speech, and I I chimed in right after he got done speaking, and I'm like, listen guys, I don't mean to ruin the mood here, but there needs to be a real legit sense of urgency like i don't know if everyone has accepted the fact that we could lose tomorrow like it's a, it's a real possibility so everyone on this call needs to be operating at the highest sense of urgency and it was just the the, the mood was casual a bit laissez-faire and uh, you know the the phrase i keep on saying is you reap what you sow like you, you have to make adjustments kevin beto when he was a city council member in el paso championed a infrastructure project that displaced an entire neighborhood of people of like low income largely undocumented families living in the barrio to uh, redevelop downtown el paso i did not know that. yeah like he championed a whole bunch of super gentrification progress at, at the behest of his father-in-law who was a multi-billionaire real estate developer and so, like, the fact that you're, like, going to have that guy come and phone bank for you as the face of progressivism in Austin, I was just like, dude, you, you're well, so I mean, it, like, it, just, it just wasn't effective. I mean, it's there, ridiculous. There was, there was 50 people on the call. I mean, I, I, I feel, I mean, I don't know what the circumstances you're talking about, but I, 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 I like, can send I you like, the article from Political afterwards. I'll send it to you. Okay. I, I like, I like Beto a lot. We could have utilized him in a better way than a, than a phone bank. I'd so love I, to have a beer I'm with in, him. What's that? I'd love to have a beer with Beto. I don't just, I don't really oh, yeah, like him so as a political I. official, but like, yeah. and same with Jimmy, dude. I've gotten drunk with Jimmy once. Oh, cool. And Jimmy was great, like, to talk to in person. Like, interacting. Jimmy was, like, a fun guy to, like, interact with. I just didn't think he was, like, good at his job or an effective person on council. And we just needed a change from what was happening, man. That, that was my perspective on it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this if this was the change. I mean, here, I mean Mackenzie's got – she's got to prove a lot of people wrong. Good, and I think she will. I think she will. I, 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 I don't think she will. I mean, you, I, you have to you – have, once, the, once the election's over, you just got to root for the person to be successful. But I agree. But, but, but I don't know what I – what I think is successful might may be different for what Mackenzie thinks, and I and I think that, you know, I, I struggle with this because I I want the city council to to make make improvements with homelessness. I, I I think there's a lot of things we can improve on, but she she has to prove that she is not the kind of person that she has been in the past with her mistakes and personal things. And you know, one thing I think she's going to have issues with right away is that. Since this past August, she has given $125,000 to a consulting firm called Pinpoint Action LLC. Nobody knows what this company is, even if, even if it even exists. It doesn't have a it's not on the, it doesn't have a Texas ID uh, number. It has a Florida address, and it it was incorporated in 2018, and then it was an active in 2019. So no one knows what this company is and why a city council candidate has, has paid this, this large amount of money to a consulting firm that nobody knows anything about. I, know, but then, I, I would imagine she's going to face some, face some immediate ethics issues about that. Maybe. We'll, we'll see attention. what happens. But then there's also like there's also a slew of financial problems and money issues that Jimmy Flanagan had. They had a whole article about Jimmy Flanagan's financial stuff in the Bulldog. You know, like, Well, personal debt is a lot different from we're talking about potentially, you know, Someone else will take a look and see if, it, if this might be a campaign finance. Well, I mean, it's all, I no all that idea. stuff is literally something, on her report. All that stinks. stuff is on her report, and you know that that's up to the people investigating to find out whatever. Out. Like it's all public. It's not like we're uncovering stuff that was not publicly available. I'm just saying, someone, so there's hey. some questions that need to be answered there, and I would sure like to know what this company did for her during her campaign. Hey, that's, that's all I'm saying. That's 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 fair and respectable. Um, did you read the Statesman article about the money that we spent on um, our, our homeless budget, how $30 million of what we spent on homelessness is just co totally unaccounted for? I did not. Was that today? That was a few, like, a week or two ago. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, 
we're barely scrounging enough change up to like save the bars and the music venue and help people in the service industry. And it's like, you see shit like that. And it's just like, dude, I don't want these people representing me on council, man. That, that, that's, that's really it. It's like, there's so many holes in this. And then when we defunded our police department, man, like we could all agree we spend a little too much on policing. Like I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and say that we don't, I think we spend a little bit too much. Right. But to cut $170 million from that department and not give a single penny of this to like our bars and restaurants and music venues, like we had a prime opportunity to like help, um, keep a lot of these like Austin landmarks solvent. Right. And to help keep them afloat. And I think that if we did that, there would have been way less of a backlash. Uh, well, and we did it. Yeah. We just blatantly didn't do it. We were just like, oh, let me just give it to, let me just spend $60 million on homelessness. And like, where's that money even going? This is just going to your buddies at the nonprofits. It's just like, a, it's like almost like a money laundering thing. But you say we're spending money on homelessness just to like appease people and make people feel like you're progressive. What I have a problem with, uh, first of all, I uh, I am a strong supporter of the police force. We need the police to live in a, so I got to fly in my face. No, we good. need the police to live in a, uh, police to live in a civilized society. I, I am also for a police accountability. But I do have a problem with these with these calls to just straight up to fund the police. I think it's nonsense. It doesn't make any sense at all. And then Jimmy talked about blowing up the police station on uh, that one video. Like, yeah. I, <laughs> the, the problem is if you're if you're going to take funds away from the police force, you have to you have to rationalize it. If that if that if that those funds are going into um, some sort of police reform, whether it be better training for cops, learning ways to de-escalate uh, situations, whatever, whatever it might be. But you just straight up, Seattle did this too. And that's, that's my hometown. And by the way, I'll have to get into, we'll have to talk about Teddy Roosevelt and Robert and, 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 they, and talk about their obsession with my city and the homelessness problem there. We, but, I mean, sure. I mean, I've talked to both of them. Like, they're both like super cool in person. Like Teddy Roosevelt, they're loves super cool in person. They're just assholes on Twitter. Everyone's an <laughs> asshole on Twitter, though. I mean, like being on the internet facilitates assholism and jackassery. Like that's well, what that's what it's for. You kind of, you you start fights with people and do things on Twitter too. Like if I look, if I just saw your Twitter, Tech Kevin, uh -huh. and didn't like bother reaching out or talking to you, I would think you're a fucking asshole too. I am an asshole. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here on the show and pretend like but I'm I, a but great I like guy. you as a human but being. Talking like sitting with you face so to face. Like, yeah. But but here's here's the difference between me and and guys like. What do you want? We're, we're getting, uh, we're all right, cool. Here's the difference between me and guys like Robert Shanahan and Teddy Roosevelt, a.k.a. Derek Williams. Uh, their, their entire purpose, first of all, I didn't know who either of these guys until I started getting involved in this campaign. And the reason Robert got on my radar is because he started creating these really homophobic memes, memes about me. He thinks he's really good at Photoshop. So we would put together these stupid pictures where it's like a picture of me and a picture of Jimmy superimposed with a hashtag yummy daddy councilman. <laughs> yummy dad. And then, and then there's a picture of Jimmy and, and me uh, with a bottle of Vaseline. The, this is all this is all Robert Shanahan's work and, and he shares it out and people laugh about it it was just like it, it's pretty clear that this guy has a problem with gay people you think so? okay. I, absolutely I all of his they, tweets are like Flanagan gave... pervert daddy soy I mean, boy well, yeah I, he I think, clearly has an issue with gay people and he's yeah, and he's, and he's made that very clear to me I anybody that supported, I did, I disagree. tell I, me how I'm wrong here I think that I what think do you think just, about that? Let me give you a quick quote here. This is a, this is a tweet. No, go, go for this it, is go a right. tweet I got from uh, from Robert. Jesus, uh, you all right? You took all right. Took notes. Let's see it. Let's see it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see the tweet. I came prepared, tweet? man. I want to be the most prepared guest in Petty You're Cab Show dude. history. All right, let's, let's see it. He yeah. he he tweeted this last week. Let me preface this by saying that Julie Nolan and and Becky McMillan, the Stop Adler women. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Julie. They created a par a parody account based on me. Oh, Karen McKay. Karen McKay. Yeah, <laughs> and it was it's it's it is it's not possibly it's the worst parody account in the history history of Twitty, Twitter. It was not funny or effective whatsoever. But this was this is after Julie started tweeting my family members, completely inappropriate. N none of which didn't even know that I was really involved in this campaign. And so uh, Julie reached out to my uncle. Robert responded to that, and he he tweeted the he tweeted this out quote. I wonder if that's the uncle that touched him as a child and got him interested in perverts. Do you think those kind of comments are acceptable, Alex? People make asshole comments all the time on the internet, man. It, it I, is don't, I don't it joke is about child molestation. I don't think, I it's, a, a I don't think it's a topic. You I made a rap song about Biden touching kids. I'll play for you afterwards. I made a Joe Biden rap song about that. Yeah, I don't I mean, know if like, I need to hear that. <laughs> it, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that. Did you do one for Trump, too? No, no, not yet. You thought, ah, you know, who cares if he's been, 
he's assaulted and grabbed, you know, over 15 women. It, it's let's let's focus on Biden and let's the, focus on Biden. The one unsubstantiated report. Yeah. The, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, he, I, I just don't. The, him and Ro- Robert and Teddy Roosevelt. These guys are like the. Uh, the Batman and Robin of just of internet out, of internet trolling, internet what trolling about and tweeting Christine's out racist and homophobic shit. Yeah, but I then here's the other problem. Here's all. the other problem too, and and this is like this is another problem with Jimmy's campaign too, and it was that it, it felt like if you disagreed with Flanagan's message or you want or you didn't want Flanagan to win, it felt and maybe I was wrong, but this is how it felt to me that they were really quick to call you a racist or a bigot or a homophobe or a transphobe or all this shit. If you su- just for not supporting Jimmy, like so, there was like a lot of like there was also a lot of like cry bullying too that, that that it seemed like was happening on behalf of Jimmy's campaign. So it's like the whole thing was just like a big mess, man. I mean, that's just a little sample. It was a mess. Am I am I am I cry bullying for pointing out that? I think Robert you're actually doing. I think I think you're actually doing great. I, I think you're doing oh, thanks, good. I think man. I think we're. I needed a compliment today. Yeah, I think you're doing fine. I think these are this is important that we're hashing out some disagreements. Um, you know. I well, honestly I, don't. I don't spend that much time on Twitter, dude. I spend I, I more tweet, than I need to. Yeah, but. you spend. I think, and I think here's another thing too, man. I think that like the the problem that I have with you, not even it's not even a problem I have with you. It's it's a const, it's a uh, constructive criticism. Okay, I need that. All right, and and I'm and, and I offer the same criticism to Robert and to Teddy and to Becky and all that stuff, right? And you know what the, the constructive criticism is? What's that? You guys spend too much time on the internet. I would agree. You spend too much time on the internet, and the more time you spend on the internet, this inter- the internet, Facebook, Twitter, and all these things, they create algorithms based on anger. Th- that's true. Okay? It, the it more all time depends you spend, on your The more you create a cycle of anger and frustration, and people wind up thinking that they're a lot more oppressed, and they're a lot more upset, and things that are a lot worse than what they really are, and the more time you spend, it facilitates a cycle where people are hateful and mean to one, each other, one, to, another, to one another. So I think that this like true, a, big, a big problem that... A, a lot of what you're feeling and a lot of your concerns, I empathize with you, and I'm, and I think that, that it's valid. But I think a lot of it is just based on the fact that everyone's just spending too much time on the internet. If you were to go talk to them in person, you'd probably get along great with both Robert and Teddy. Oh, I don't think I would. <laughs> I know, I know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to hang out with those guys at all. I mean, wh- why would I want to hang out with a guy like Teddy Roosevelt that tweets shit like who wants? I mean, Teddy Bro- Roosevelt wants police reform and like um, supports legalization of marijuana and and psilocybin mushrooms too. These like, guys spend their, these guys spend their time all day every day tweeting out every p- crime that goes on in this country so that they could hopefully pin it on homeless people so that then they could exploit that oh, dude, and then and then mock the liberal uh, Yo, but, lawmakers here right, in town. Right. But but we do have a huge problem with this. Like I'm not saying I'm not saying we don't. Like, what are they doing to help to help cause the problems? They're just he just goes around with his little drone. To, oh, we got a camping site over there. Oh, uh, Citizen F says we got a stabbing on East Fourth Street. Yeah, but drones also allow people to to get a clear view as to what what an area is. And you could use drones to do whatever message you want to perpetuate. And I think yeah, maybe people need to talk to to like maybe maybe like. There needs to be a little bit more of a man on the street journalism aspect of like actually talking to homeless people. But like me and my boy, a while ago, we made an MTV Cribs episode with the homeless. Oh, okay, cool. I'll show that to How you. Was that? It was fun. Cool. But you know, before we like made this video, like making fun of everything, you know what we did before we did all that? What's that? We bought him beer and talked to them. Oh, cool. So it's like there's got to be a mixture. I think that like yeah, maybe actually talk to these homeless people and have a conversation and like get to know them a little bit and then make the video and make your point because a lot of these homeless people, if you actually were to talk to them, because I talk to them downtown when I'm giving rides. Right. A lot of them don't like the fact that you could just set up a tent and do all that stuff anywhere in Austin either. Well, yeah, and I'm not saying. I'm listen. We got a lot of problems we got to solve here around the, the homelessness in, in Austin. But the guy, the guys like Robert and Teddy, um, they're not solving any problems you know at how, all. You know how you get those guys to be quiet? How's that? You know how you get people like that? Really simple. You make Austin a better place so that there's no there's no audience for complaining. Like the reason uh. people like that, the reason people like that are able to like have a voice and say what they're saying is because, dude, our streets are flooded with homeless people. And so if, if the homeless situation I mean, was that's, that's better one, here, we would have we would have fewer yeah. homophobic and racist tweets from, yeah. from so it's there'd be less of an audience for that shit. hundred percent. And if we had and if we had done a much better job of like taking care of like our small business community and helping small business owners and helping people who work in small businesses that, that depend on small businesses to make a living and we prioritize that immediately, yeah, you would see a lot less of that shit. 150%, I stand by that and I'll go to the grave with that statement. What are, what are, what are Teddy and Robert going to do all day if there's less crime and they don't have more time to, to spread out every crime that happens on the citizen? Exactly, those guys, what exactly, those exactly, do? exactly. So you, if you really look, I, I have no problem. I'm sure they found a Kevin, cause to be Kevin. an asshole somewhere else. Sure, sure, listen, I got no problems with them. I've talked to both of them. I like them, okay? 
Um, do you not have a problem with these? Can tweets? you listen to you me, man? I, I just want to know. Do you have a problem with what the shit they tweet out? Does it like bothers don't, you at all? Not really. Because really? it, it's just Twitter. I, I don't let. I, I try my very best to not let what people say on Twitter phase me. Yeah. I'm busy living my life. I have dreams and goals and things I want to do. Right. As long as you're not attacking me for who I talk to, as long as I don't feel like I'm being threatened or like physically or from a job standpoint or an economic standpoint for me expressing myself, I'm. I live and let live. It's what. It's what. It's what. It's what it is. That's my take. This is. This is my opinion. Um. So does, it says a straight white guy, as long as they're not coming after you, but they can go after they can go after gays and. But do you and, see people and, doing and that? Do you see people doing that though? Like, what? I, I mean, on Twitter, no, but I'm saying like in from person. Teddy here. Listen, they're all racist listen, bullshit. Dude, right now in our society, if you really want to get technical, we are the most um, tolerant, compassionate, and understanding that we have ever been in history. Not in this race. I'm saying it in light, it, just in. Our society as a whole, we are the most tolerant group of people ever, man. Like, I, I give pedicab rides downtown and rain, like, and oil can Harry's and all the gay clubs. A mm -hmm. whole bunch of these people voted for fucking Trump, dude. Uh -huh. Okay? Like, Donald Trump got more, um, the, you know, do you know which demographic Donald Trump actually lost voters with? The only demographic. Uh, lost? Yeah. That he, uh, lost, that he actually got, No. Straight white males were oh. the only group of people that actually decreased their voting total for Donald Trump compared to um, 2016. Good so to know. that that being said, man, like we are the most, we are a lot more tolerant and accepting than we have ever been ever. And then like our corporate media um, pushes the opposite because they want they, there's there's a deliberate agenda to weaponize division, man. And like I don't think either of us should be falling for it. And I do my best not to. Jake, and that, that's why I, and that's why I try to like be open with everybody and give everybody a chance to present their best self, Kevin. And and I'll and I'll tell you the same thing I, I said earlier regarding Harrison Smith. Easy for you to say as a, as a straight white guy. You just we just have to accept that as straight white guys, we and and I, I'm a I'm a I'm a prime example of white privilege that I, that we we will never experience any sort of discrimination like like I mean, Jimmy gotta, Flanagan received in this race because he's a homosexual. I don't think Jimmy Jimmy Flanagan these, did not receive discrimination because oh, he, be he received me, discrimination Alex. because he was bullying people with you identity politics. But I'll say this, and I said this to Brad Swale. I, I'll say this right now, and I, I don't know if you got this clip when I about Brad Swale. Oh, I saw your episode with Brad Swale. Okay, did you see? Oh my God, I, I love how you I love how you had to explain to him that Jewish people are oppressed, and he was giving you the deer in headlights look like he didn't know what you were talking about. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we got the message across. But anyway, right. that, that being said, though, dude, like, um. My my thing about Jimmy Flanagan experiencing bigotry, I don't think it really happened so much. Um, I think I don't think it really happened so much in this election, but I think that a lot of stuff that probably happened with Jimmy in his past because he's a little older than us, uh -huh. um, probably may have carried over, and he might be a little bit more sensitive to certain things because of maybe what he had to deal with in the past. Because maybe when Jimmy was like in his twenties and in his teens and his early thirties, people were a lot less accepting, so you had to like be a lot more closeted about um, how you felt and who you are. And I think that's that carried over from the past, but it's just. For the way it is right now, dude, you could be as gay as you want. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> that is completely false, Alex. And we <laughs> saw that in this race. Were you supporting a gay candidate in this in this campaign? I was. And I would, no, but, and but I, it wasn't. But, but the reason I didn't support Jimmy was not because he was gay. I I'm don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck I'm, about I'm that. I'm not like, saying. If Mackenzie I, Kelly was a lesbian, I'd still support her. I'm, I'm you know not what I mean? saying like, you I would did. Not I'm talking care. about people discriminated against Jimmy Flanagan because he was a gay candidate. No, and you that's cannot bullshit. Say, are you kidding me? I saw it every day, Alex. People were making. I received. I received homophobic comments myself. Are you? Are you? No, I'm. I, I'm a straight guy. When I went to that park and the WTFers were confronting us and his, and little little tough guy Luis Rodriguez, I was getting homophobic call, comments from everyone. Oh, dude. you're supporting a dick sucking candidate. Blah blah blah. I, I you're didn't hear that. You're I saw those videos, dude. You're playing your fluffer boy. Yo, I also saw <laughs> homophobia is alive saw, and well. I also Alex. saw. You've got to listen, this. I also, I also saw in that video. I don't know if it was you, but it was one of the, one of the Flanagan staff saying, "I don't take pictures with ex-cons." Like I heard that. That comment. was me. Yeah, that's but that's fuck. That's a shitty. That's that's a discriminatory what, shitty thing to say too, uh, though. What do you want me to say to these guys at the park? They came to the park twice in three weeks. Let's talk about the WTF efforts for a second. All right, no, I'm I want to. I want to set. I want to set a, right, right, set a right, picture right. for your viewers here. <laughs> There's six to seven uh, Flanagan supporters at the park. They're minding their own business. Many of them are, uh, you know, pretty left wing. Uh, they don't like confrontation. They don't seek it out. They're mind, they're minding their own business. They they got some mailers. They're stapling together some paper for canvassing purposes. All of a sudden. 15 big guys on bikes roll up. They got their signs. They come over to our group, and they're cussing everybody out. And, and then they have the audacity afterwards to say that we slandered them. 
These yeah, guys but are... I also I saw I saw Luis's episode. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But I saw Luis's episode with, with Brad, and he was saying that he was getting private messages on Twitter saying that he wants his family members to get raped and shit. Well, by, like... that's ridiculous. And let, let me tell you, I, I I would never send any. I didn't say I it was you. Sp- I didn't yeah. say it was you. But I'm saying he was getting those messages. So it's like you know, and and then the media is calling these people racist and stuff like that because like that's fucking like that like the media. Nobody and... called them racist. At least no one from no one on my but side. But maybe it felt like it because of that picture, and everyone was lumped together Here's, because he... of that. Bullshit. Chris we all Ritchie know the Gate picture thing, of like, City yeah, Hall, yeah, and that's what yeah. prompted this entire thing. I know for a fact that Jimmy Flanagan didn't even know who Luis Rodriguez was until he came to the park that one day. When Jimmy was talking about races in that photo, he was talking about the Proud Boys. And and Luis and his big ego was like, oh, man, they must be talking about us. We got to go to the park. Like. You can plug Jimmy, Yo, but, Jimmy, but, uh, Jimmy but Kevin, Flanagan. That, that's, that's it's like, ridiculous. But that's this whole what thing it, started. But that's what it felt like. They lumped, every, they lumped everybody in that together. And then they lumped the Recall Adler stuff along with that as well. And I'm just like, no, dude, people wanted to... Sign that petition because of everything that we mentioned. Did Jimmy say the WTFers were, were racist? Did he say I think Luis Rodriguez is a racist? I don't think he said that. No, but he did I, not. But but everybody on Twitter and the way the picture was in the media, like it got misconstrued. And and if that was the case, Jimmy should have literally went and said to Luis while he was at his car, like I never said that, man. And I'm sorry that that was he was yelling about you. at him, calling a pussy and a bitch, and getting right in his face. Yeah, well, there was how, also how five. How are you gonna have a civil conversation? Okay, but there was, was like, there was like five, that. It was impossible. There were there was like a a, a, um, a period of time. This is what Luis told me, okay? That they were having like a civil conversation Luis up is until a liar. like, Go ahead. What, maybe, but it didn't seem like he, he was when he talked to me. And anyway, man, when you saw my interview with Luis and when I've talked to Luis, I've had nothing but positive interactions with Luis. And I think that if you have a concern with Luis Rodriguez about things, you should respect, you should like have lunch with him and talk to him about how you feel and hash it out because he seems like he would actually talk to you. And then when I was okay. talking to you, when I was talking to Luis about Jacob, he said that he has respect for Jacob and respect for the fact that he stands up for his beliefs and he had, would have no problem like hanging out and talking to Jacob about whatever he was like whatever his issues were here's why i wouldn't meet with with luis rodriguez i met him once and during that process he reamed me out he blew his covid air in my face you COVID watched that video right not i didn't say me to say his COVID. nasty nasty air in my face All right. COVID actually air. i think his i think his daughter and his wife might have had covid but that's neither here no here no there but then, but here's, but the then, thing, here's the thing about luis him on the show that's a very different luis from the guy i met in the park the guy in the show was calm he was cordial. He seemed nice. He's talking about all these great things he co- he does in the community. He shows up to the park and completely uh, k- tries to kick anyone, in the, everyone in the dick. And and pre- pretty much, if he if you don't agree with Luis uh, politically, he he treats you like you're nothing. That's he not treats, true. I, yes, I was... he does. Have you been on the receiving end of Luis Rodriguez? Did you not watch the video I sent you? I saw the video, and it did, like I. I that's why I'm. Kind of confused as to why you're like saying all this stuff, and also with the confused. whole mass thing, dude. The whole mass thing, it's like that's another thing that I got upset about. And I'm, I'm just sharing my concerns, man. Like, I don't like the idea of shaming people because they're not wearing masks outdoors. Like, I didn't, I, I just don't like the idea. They of shaming came people. to our event just to stir shit up, and Flanagan wasn't even there. He's so, so he's like, oh, Flanagan's not here. I guess we'll just, uh, we'll just yell and scream at every other. Planning and support here. It was ridiculous. They did it twice. And I don't know. Luis might have done some good stuff in the community. But that video with, with Flanagan at the park, uh, the original one, uh, I think over 15,000 people have, have seen it. So now people know the real Luis Rodriguez. And the real Luis Rodriguez is an asshole. All right. Well, listen. You're entitled to your opinion. I am. You're entitled to your opinion. The election's over right now. And I think ultimately, like, now that it's over, there should be, like, a come-together moment. And I think that now that things are over, there's probably going to be a little bit less tension. And you should, like, respectfully voice your concerns and just see what happens, man. Like, you said it earlier. You want, you want Mackenzie to do the best that she can, right? I do. So help Mackenzie do the best she can. Be a positive person and offer your concerns. Be polite and see what happens. You have four. I, you have four I would years agree with to, that. You have four years to, to to do that. I would agree with that. You have four years to do that. Um, how much time have we done so far, Charlie? Fifty-three we've done 50, minutes. Gee, we've, done man. A, we've done a minute. Um, I think we talked about pretty much. We talked about I, a lot of stuff, right? There's one more thing any? I wanted to bring up sure. that, I, that I, I actually have to bring up. Sure. Right, do, do you know? And I'm sorry, I talk a lot. But, no, you know, yeah, I talk a lot too. We both. talk a lot. This yeah, we, we have our opinions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know April Salazar very well? I met her once. She was not. She was. She's cool. She's a very interesting woman, but she. <laughs> and so but yo, those, anyway, back to, yo, she, back to back to this Luis thing too. Okay. Um, last thing, there's more diver- They looked like there was more diversity in Luis Rodriguez's motorcycle group than there are in Jimmy Flanagan's campaign staff. And that that all goes point, but back to my point that no one called them at least the camp, the campaign and no one close to it like myself called them racist. Well, I'm glad they're that that abs- got clear. They're absolutely homophobes. 
They're absolutely homophobic. But he was like, dude, that we got gay people in that group, so how are you going to be homophobic when you're like Did he say that? that? Yeah. He said they have gay he people in that group? In the oh, I find that very hard to believe. Um, well, that's what he told me. I, they I were calling they... me a dick sucker at the park because I was supporting a dick sucking Yeah, but candidate. I think that people um, back in Luis's generation and stuff like that, just they, people just speak differently based on generations. Oh. You know, they're only in their mid forties. It's not like it's a yeah, huge it's a different gener generation. It's gap. a different generation being in your mid forties. I remember when I was like a kid, like there were certain words that you could say to people back, like that that weren't cons like seen as as that bad. And now, like you can't say it as much. You know, so I don't it's, know, it, man. It's, it's different, man. Call people me talk crazy. Call me crazy. I'm just the guy that doesn't want to rip on anyone for being gay or what race you are or what your faith is. I just want people to be respected. I'm in the same boat. That's all I really bro, want. Bro, I'm, in I know the same, as, as I'm in the same as boat as a Jewish person. You, you can I'm understand same, that. I'm super empathetic, dude. I'm right. in the same boat as you and I also don't want to rip on people for not wanting to wear a mask if they don't want to or for not wanting to get a vaccine if they don't want to get a vaccine like I'm, I'm taking it a step further Kevin well well yeah I mean <laughs> I'm taking th it there's also a difference between like an, whether or not you respect or not respect masks and then Luis going out of his way to blow his air in my face because I was pointing out that none of them that came into well, Kevin, our space were wearing masks Kevin, I'm sorry that 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 you had a bad experience. It, the, the <laughs> don't, don't condescend I'm me, man. I'm not condescending no, you. Like, I'm not. I love you, buddy. I love you. Listen, listen. We're, and we'll get, we're gonna get a beer. At, like maybe not today because I got like a bunch of episodes. I I'll, do go, I'll grab a beer. But we with should. You, sure. It'd be fun. Yeah. We like this. I think overall this is pretty positive. Um, and I really do appreciate you coming on and talking Absolutely. to me about. It. I, I really appreciate it. Like you have no idea, man. Because I know that like uh, it took some balls to even come and have this, this discussion with me. I, 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 I'm, that's why my my podcast is called Searching for Shame. I, I am a very shameless person. Uh, I get my mouth gets me in trouble all the time. It certainly got me in, tr in trouble during this campaign. But, uh, you know, I still I, I still felt that I was doing my actions. I was doing it for the right reasons. And I think and that I was doing what I was doing for the right reasons, too. And I think ultimately, as long as we can have like civil back and forth discussions with one another where we can like empathize and recognize how yeah. how we feel and, we and definitely need empathize more our, sure. our legitimate concerns will move forward from this positively but if we don't yeah. we won't move forward from this positively I so want to be really, positive with you Alex will, I you, even, will I, you grab a beer with me sometime I would love to <laughs> um, nothing can make me happier Kevin I, I would love alright anyway guys this has been an all new episode is that it I thought we were just getting warmed up I would love to man we, you, we can come back you right, got two more shows me, after this dude and let me uh I'll, I'll come on your searching for shame thing if yeah, you that'd want. Be great, man. Let me Thanks know. It'll be fun. Yeah. Fun. Um, this has been an all new episode of Convos on the Pedicab. Before we go, Kevin, how can we get a hold of you? Uh, you could find me on uh, Twitter uh, at real Kevin McKay, uh, Instagram. I guess that's private, but I'm gonna make it on private. At Kevin, at real Kevin McKay. I'm the real Kevin McKay. That's pretty much. That's it. Unmasked. 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 But I have it right here. And the the deal. Uh, yeah, just just for all you haters out there. I we had this thing set up so we could have a little space and I could speak without a mask. I'm putting my mask back on right after this. Yes. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Really appreciate All right. it. All right.